أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum guys how is the last 10 days of Ramadan going i hope we're all going to try to max out on our good deeds inshallah ladies and gentlemen please 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 there is a masjid in the republic of benin where the brothers and sisters over there cannot come into the masjid to pray because the roof of the masjid has just completely busted and if you know west africa when it rains it pours and so our brothers and sisters are having to pray in a masjid where it's damp where there is so much water either that or they can no longer come to the masjid to pray so i really want you guys for the sake of allah to do donate whatever you can for the sake of Allah to help this masjid so that they can replace the roof build a proper roof over this masjid so that our brothers and sisters can come back to the masjid and pray guys let's try to preserve the deen by preserving the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah Allah will build for him a home in jannah Assalamu alaikum all welcome back welcome to my Ramadan series understanding Quran with Nafisa guys we have the last 10 days of Ramadan left i want us to up our game in terms of the good deeds that we want to do all the things we had planned to do so maybe go back to your Ramadan planner if you didn't get the Ramadan planner for this year you missed out but inshallah next year I will release another one inshallah um but maybe go back to what you had planned for this Ramadan take a look at it review it see how it's been going for you and if there are some things on there you really want to pick up more on during these last 10 days then this is a great opportunity for you to do so okay go back to those plans go back to those goals go back to maximizing your Ramadan and gaining as much good deeds as possible. Let's make the best of the last 10 days that is left of Ramadan because guys, it could be our last one. We don't know there are no guarantees. So let's just make the best out of it. All right ladies, so today and gents as well. <laughs> today we're going to continue from verse 147. That is verse 147 of Surah An-Nisa. Bismillah. Allah does not like negative thoughts to be voiced except by those who have been wronged. Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Whether you reveal or conceal a good or pardon an evil, surely Allah is ever pardoning, most capable. Surely those who deny Allah and his messengers and wish to make a distinction between Allah and his messengers saying we believe in some and disbelieve in others desiring to forge a compromise they are indeed the true disbelievers and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment as for those who believe in Allah and his messengers accepting all rejecting none he will surely give them their reward and Allah is all forgiving most merciful the people of the book demand that you o prophet bring down for them a revelation in writing from heavens they demand what is even greater than this from moses saying make Allah visible to us so a thunderbolt struck them for their wrong doing Then they took the calf for worship after receiving clear signs still we forgave them for that after their repentance and gave Moses compelling proof so we will stop there and we will go back to verse 148 inshallah so Allah says Allah does not like negative thoughts to be voiced out except if you have been wronged this is a reminder for you and I to know that Allah doesn't necessarily hold us accountable for the things that we think but he does hold us accountable for the things that come out of our mouths and one thing that came to mind as i was reading this verse was when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost khadija and he was very sad and tears were rolling down from his eyes and he said indeed the heart feels pain but the tongue does not say except that which pleases allah and that's a perfect example of 
of how Allah allows us to be human. We are allowed to feel, we're allowed to be sad sometimes, we're allowed to be happy, and we're allowed to be upset at times, we're allowed to have a variety of different emotions. We don't have to be happy all the time and it's not a sign of a believer that you're going to be happy all the time. Some things are really painful. Losing a loved one is very painful. Um, you know, experiencing challenging times in life. You're not just gonna be walking around with a smile 24 seven. It's okay to feel sad at times, right? Not that we should take it to, the, to an extreme. So Allah gives us space for that. But what he says is less control our tongue. Let's control how we speak. Let's control what we voice out. Allah says he doesn't like that we should voice out the negative thoughts that come into our minds. And oftentimes we have control over our thoughts, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes those what we call thoughts could just be the whispers of shaitan and things like that. So we're not to entertain the negative thoughts. In fact, the sahabas are known to have questioned the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, you know, sometimes the type of thoughts that come to our minds, like it scares us. Are we going to be judged for, for that? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, no. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, don't voice out that negative thought. Except in what case? Except in the case that you may have been oppressed and you need to speak up. And this is so important for women who are in abusive relationships or even men who are in abusive relationships. That at times you have to speak up. You need to speak up because if you don't speak up, no one's going to know what you're going through. You're not going to be able to get the help that you need. Unfortunately, sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes what happens is, especially women, because I mostly work with women, I see that they have this sense of guilt about coming to tell somebody else that I'm going through a challenge or I'm going through a difficulty or maybe someone who's very close to me, for example, my mom or my husband is oppressing me. They find it very hard to even put the words to express that, but Oftentimes you have to speak up so that you can get the help that you need. And so Allah says, except by those who have been wronged. If you've been wronged and you need to speak up to say, I've been wrong so that it can be stopped, absolutely do it. And Allah is encouraging you to do that. Except for that, Allah says, let's not speak bad thoughts that come to our minds. Okay, verse 149, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whether you reveal or conceal a good or pardon an evil, surely Allah is ever pardoning most capable. What does this mean? It means that whether we choose to expose a good deed that we may have done, or maybe we've forgiven someone, whether we choose to expose it to others or not, Allah at the end of the day knows it. Likewise, with the evil and wrong that we do, whether we expose our bad deeds or not, Allah knows it. And it's important here to note that it's not encouraged that as Muslims, you should expose your bad deeds to other people. Again, except in conditions where you're actually looking for help and you're looking for a way out. And it's necessary that you say that in that case too, it can be fine. And it's not seen as you, you know, proudly or arrogantly just sharing, sharing, um, your bad deeds. Another condition where it could be acceptable would be in the case where you're trying to teach other people a lesson from it. So, you know, we see here on YouTube these stories about these brothers and sisters who have lived a very wayward life and then they've come back to Islam. And, you know, that storyline is kind of used as something to encourage the youth to say, we've, we've been in those negative lanes and there's nothing there. There's nothing there but depression, sadness and, and sorrow. Come back to the deen. That's where your joy will lie. So again, in those type of scenarios, it can be OK. But except for that, us Muslims should not be exposing the sin that we do. In fact, it is a, the... It is among the good deeds of a Muslim that they should try to hide their sin. Sins are not something that we should just be proudly boasting about that, oh my God, guess what I did the last night? Guess what I did, did the other day? It is not befitting of a believer's character to expose his or her own sins or others for that matter, because <laughs> I said the word own. So Allah is letting us know that. So Allah says whether you expose it or you hide it, Allah knows at the end of the day, you cannot hide from Allah. All right, then Allah goes on to say that, surely those who deny Allah and his messengers and wish to make a distinction between Allah and his messenger, saying, we believe in some and disbelieve in others, desiring to forge a compromise. What is Allah saying here? I'll continue. 
They are indeed the true disbelievers and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. What does this suggest to you and I? That we have to accept all of the prophets of, of Allah. We cannot say we only believe in Muhammad, but we don't believe in Isa, Jesus. We can't say that we only believe in Muhammad and we don't believe in Moses. Moses doesn't actually exist. As a Muslim, you cannot do that. You cannot pick and choose between the prophets, which one you're going to believe in. You must believe in all of them. And that is part of believing in Tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah. We have to believe in all of them. When we don't and we want to pick and choose which of the prophets we're going to believe in, we may end up falling into this category whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that they are the true disbelievers, that they distinguish between Allah and his messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, if you read all of the surahs of the Quran, you will be able to literally pinpoint all of the prophets because Allah mentions them in the Quran. So we're not relying on what the Christians are saying or what the Jews are saying for us to know which prophets exist. No, Allah tells us who they are in his book, in the Quran. So we must believe in them. We must believe in them. Now, I will caution you to say, be careful where you get your information. What you believe about the prophets have to come from the Quran and anything that the Prophet wasallam has told us about these prophets we have to be careful not to go to other religions to gain information about these prophets from other religions because how they see these prophets and their opinions about them and all of that we cannot rely on as muslims because there's a reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about islam as his religion that he has chosen for us because we can no longer trust in the sources that have existed from other monotheistic uh, religions. So we take from the Quran and the Sunnah and we have to believe in all of the prophets. If we don't, we will fall under the categories of the true disbelievers. So let's not distinguish any differences between any of the prophets. They all exist as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. So Allah then says that he will do what for the disbelievers? Provide for them a humiliating punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his punishment. This just goes to show that we have to take all of Islam. We can't pick and choose which part of it we want or which part of it suits us. No, when we say we submit to Allah, we have to submit wholeheartedly, right? There may be part of the, the deen that you don't understand, in which case it is for you to do your studying so you have a better understanding. There is nothing wrong in anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought to us through Islam. All of it is right. And even if we don't understand, we have to trust in Allah. This part is very important. You won't always understand everything. Things won't always make sense. Sometimes Allah does things in your own life that you're just like, I, I, don't, I, don't see, <laughs> I don't see the goodness in this. And it's okay for you not to be able to see the goodness in things at times. It won't make sense for you, but it makes sense to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when Allah created Adam, and then he said to the angels that have made Adam, the angels asked Allah, they said, oh Allah, are you, you just created a, um, a creation who's going to disobey you, spread blood across the land, whilst we're here worshipping you, did not make any sense to the angels. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah said, indeed, I know what you do not. I know what you don't. Don't worry about it. I understand what I'm doing. I know what my plan is and I know why I'm doing this. So we as believers have to trust in Allah's plan even if we don't see his plan. As long as he is at the driving seat of our lives, we're going to be okay. The only time you're not going to be okay is if Allah is not in the driver's seat. And how do we put Allah in the, in the driver's seat? We take the Quran and the Sunnah and we let it be our guide as to how we live our lives. That's how we put Allah in the driving seat of our lives. And as long as you do that, Allah will never ever let you down. Allah says, whoever puts my Allah says, whoever puts their trust, whoever puts their trust in Allah, indeed Allah is sufficient for them as a disposer of affairs. And Allah never fails in his promise. As we've established in the previous videos, everything that Allah promises is true. Allah's promise is always true. So that is a reminder for both you and me. Allah then moves on to say that, as for those who disbelieve in Allah and his messengers, 
accepting all, rejecting none, he will surely give them their reward. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. That means to say, if you can put your trust in Allah, if you believe in everything he's taught you to believe in, there's going to be goodness at the end of it. You're going to reap the, the benefits of your belief, of your Iman, of your struggle. There's always going to be reward for that. It's not just do it so Allah can be pleased with you, although that is, Wallahi, is sufficient as a reward. But apart from that, Allah says, I'm going to reward you so that you know. So that you know that the goodness, the sacrifices, everything you're going through, none of it is, is, is not for without reason. Allah is surely going to reward you. So Allah goes on to say that the people of the book demanded that you, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you bring down for them a revelation in writing from heaven. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to tell people and spread the message to some, they said, no, we don't believe you. You need to go and bring down a book from heaven so we can know that you're a real prophet. And then what does Allah say about this? Allah said, what happened to you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The people demanded even worse from who? From Moses. They demanded even worse from Moses. They demanded what is even greater than this from Moses, saying to Moses, make Allah visible to us. Obviously, as we all know, Moses came before the Prophet Wasallam. So Allah is saying, if your people are saying to you, go and bring a book from heaven to prove to us you're a prophet, don't worry about it. Moses, your, your great, 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 however great he is, grandfather, was demanded even more from his people. When Moses, Musa alayhi salam, came to his people to give them the information, what did they ask for? What did his people ask for? They asked that he should make Allah visible to them. This is equivalent to the type of people these days who are like, how can you believe in God? You can't even see him. The irony of all of this is that if you were to see God before you believe in him, would that be faith? Because faith is you being able to believe in God, believe in his messengers, his book and everything without you seeing him. So what did the Moses, his people say? Show us God so that we can believe in him. And what happened? Thunderbolts, lightning came down, struck down. They couldn't handle it. Allah can't expose himself to us. His, do, do, guys, <laughs> you really need to look into understanding Allah's arsh, his, his throne upon which he sits, the angels that carry Allah's thrones, how massive they are, the light, the nur that surrounds the throne of Allah. Like we could not handle it. We couldn't handle it. If Allah was to reveal himself to us, the, 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 the intensity of the energy, this whole earth will just wipe itself out. It won't be able to handle it. But these people, I don't know what they thought or who they thought Allah was. Allah is great. There is nothing like him. Nothing like him. His power, his energy, his ability is nothing like what you and I can imagine ever. We can't cope with having to see Allah. So when the people of Moses said to Moses, show us God so we can believe him. What did Allah says? So a thunderbolt struck them for their own doing. Then they took the calf for worship after receiving clear signs. This was another thing that the people of Moses did. They decided to go worshiping the cow instead of God after it had been revealed to them that you need to worship God the creator. What did they do? They started worshiping a creation. Till this day, there are people who actually see the cow as, as this um, <laughs> special being that's worthy of, of worship. It's just an animal. <laughs> it's just an animal so what did they do they started to worship the animal this is the people of uh, Moses's people right so they took the calf for worship after clear, after receiving clear signs still still after this even Allah did what Allah still forgave them for that after their repentance and gave Moses compelling proof 